Welcome to Chapter 12, the second part. We start on page 210 after the break. Esperanza lay in bed that night and listened to the others in the front room talk about the sweeps and the deportations. They went to every major grower and put hundreds of strikers on the buses, said Juan. Some say they did it to create more jobs for those coming from the east, said Josefina. We are lucky the company needs us right now. If they didn't, we could be next. We have been loyal to the company and the company will be loyal to us, said Alfonso. I'm just glad it's over, said Hortensia. It is not over, said Miguel. In time, they will be back, especially if they have families here. They will reorganize, and they will be stronger. There will come a time when we will have to decide all over again whether to join them or not. Esperanza tried to go to sleep, but the day spun in her mind. She was glad she had kept working and thankful that her camp had voted not to strike. But she knew that under different circumstances, it could have been her on that bus. And then what would Mama have done? Her thoughts jumped back and forth. Some of those people did not deserve their fate today. How was it that the United States could send people to Mexico who had never even lived there? She couldn't stop thinking about Marta. It didn't matter if Esperanza agreed with her cause or not. No one should have to be separated from her family. Had Marta made her way back to the striker's farm without getting caught? Had she found her mother? For some reason, Esperanza had to know. The next morning, she begged Miguel to drive by the farm. The field was still surrounded by the chain-link fence, but no one was protecting the entrance this time. All the evidence of people she had seen before was there, but not one person was to be seen. Laundry waved on the clothesline. Plates with rice and beans sat on crates and swarmed with busy flies. Shoes were lined up in front of tents, as if waiting for someone to step into them. The breeze picked up loose newspapers and floated them across the field. It was quiet and desolate, except for the goat still tied to the tree, gladding for freedom. Immigration has been here, too said Miguel. He got out of the truck, walked over to the tree, and untied the goat. Esperanza looked out over the field that used to be crawling with people who thought they could change things, who were trying to get the attention of the growers and the government to make conditions better for themselves and for her, too. More than anything, Esperanza hoped that Marta and her mother were together, but now there would be no way for her to find out. Maybe Marta's aunts would hear eventually. Something colorful caught her eye. Dangling from a tree branch were the remnants of the little donkey piñata that she had given the children, its tissue streamers fluttering in the breeze. It had been beaten with a stick, its insides torn out. This concludes Chapter 12. Thank you for listening.